Hello everyone, happy Thursday and welcome today to the webinar entitled Introducing the New and Improved Blooms Literature. My name is Angel and I'm going to be your host today as we take a look at the recently revised, revamped, uh, relaunched and, and certainly uh, we hope new and improved version of Bloom's Literature, which of course is one of the uh, databases that we've been offering here at Infobase for quite some time and we were very uh, mindful of the fact that there was some really great content in the database. There's no no doubt, no argument that the the content that is was contained or has been contained in Bloom's was not phenomenal. I mean, it, it's, it's absolutely been uh, you know, one of our, our more more popular databases over the years, uh, but it was definitely high time that we gave it a bit of a facelift and t uh, pulled some of that really uh, useful and helpful uh, content that was kind of buried in the old version and really brought it to the forefront. <coughs> Particularly, some of the newer, um, the, some of the newer content that we added to the database even before the relaunch. So we're very excited to be able to offer the new and improved blooms, which we will take a look at today. Uh, in order to help you, as far as. Uh, leaving today's webinar with as much information as possible. If you take a look at the control panel, which should be hugging the right-hand side of your computer screen, uh, you will see a handout attached to the called Bloom's Literature Flyer. It's got a lot of the information that we're going to be looking at today and certainly more. Uh, so that's a great little takeaway for you that you can certainly um, save to your computer, print and distribute as needed so that everyone at your uh, school or library or university will have ample information about the uh, exceptional resource that we're going to be looking at today. So, uh, with that, let's get started. Certainly, it's no, uh, it's no, um, you know, small thing to say that it looks much more um, alive, much more vibrant in the new version than it used to. Uh, you know, certainly, it's 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 quite inviting to uh, students as well as uh, perhaps library patrons as they kind of you know start to poke around here and what we uh, as I mentioned in the beginning one of the things that we really wanted to do was make sure that we brought all the great content that was in the database to the forefront so uh, and, and this was actually something that uh, as an English teacher myself I specifically wanted to see in blooms and have wanted to see for a while and that um, the section here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna jump around just a little bit, and then we'll eventually fall into kind of a a, a comfortable pattern here. Uh, but the section here, the slider called most studied works. This is something that I think Blooms has needed for quite some time, and, and uh, so I really I, I think it's a good place for us to start today. Uh, and these are essentially novel centers. So if you are looking for uh, if you're looking for everything you know, that um, the database contains about a certain work. Uh, this is a great place to start. And, and we've chosen uh, for this particular slider among the most studied works, not only in Bloom's literature itself, but also kind of in literature in general. Uh, hard to argue To Kill a Mockingbird, you know, is not one of the most studied works of literature. So you'll when you click on any of the works in that slider, you'll get taken to a page that uh, immediately presents just a ton of information about this work. So we have um, the author, there's, there are convenient links to a lot of these resources. So if you wanted to do some, uh, if you wanted to look up the author herself, uh, there's also a featured article for each work. That's going to be kind of the, the article that we chose from Blooms that really encapul encapsulates uh, all the information that you're going to find in, in the best possible way. And then definitely take a look up here to the area called Quick Links. In this case, we've included a link to the discussion questions for To Kill a Mockingbird. And we're going to look at uh, you know all these things as we go along today, including where to find all the discussion questions for uh, any you know work that has them in the database. I will do that a little bit later. So for now, we'll just take a quick look, and this also gives me a great opportunity to kind of show you what a typical search results page looks like, because it's going to be very similar to what you see here. Uh, so the first tab is always going to be collection of reference works. These are generally 
um, overviews, synopses, um, biographies of the author, uh, a list of characters. So that's actually listed right here as well. Uh, so these, this, this link here is going to take you to articles that really examine in depth uh, some of the characters in the work. And then the next link here is to the, or the next tab rather, is to all the critical writings for this particular work. So uh, these are um, works that are in uh, Bloom's literature that may have either been written by Harold Bloom himself, such as this one. Uh, and, and anytime you're searching around Bloom's, anytime you type in the words Bloom on, and then uh, the name of a work, the name of an author. So if you come up here and do that, you'll actually be taken directly to an article that was written by Harold Bloom himself. And and just uh, if I can quickly uh, digress for a moment, I do want to point out that the whole purpose of this database is to to um, to collate and, and and call all of the lifelong work of uh, probably one of the most well-known, eminent, uh, preeminent literary critics uh, in Harold Bloom. And I'm happy to say he's still very much alive, still working with one of our authors, and uh, as a regular contributor still to the database that bears his name. Uh, and also, besides the fact that we have uh, crit critical essays written by Bloom himself, we also have a number of articles from uh, collections of literary criticisms or volumes that were edited by Bloom. So he, in some way or another, uh, whether he specifically chose some of the critical content or wrote it himself or edited the volume that it's in, uh, Bloom really has touched on just about every aspect of the database. So. Uh, you know, uh, if you are a huge fan of Harold Bloom, that's certainly going to be a plus in your mind. And we certainly realize that Bloom also has some detractors, uh, people who feel as though he has selected, for for example, his canon, uh, a collection of works that were very specific to certain cultures and so on. Um, but I think it's really hard to argue that, um, you know, Bloom hasn't been one of the preeminent critics of our time. So uh, the works of criticism, uh, you can actually narrow your results from when the works were written, or you can just simply scroll here and click on any one of the articles that you see. So, uh, for example, if we were to click on the article Bloom on To Kill a Mockingbird, you'll see that, um, you know, there are a number of options once you get to any article page. You can actually save the article. You can print it. Uh, one of the newest features of Bloom's is the ability to uh, make use of either, excuse me, either the record URL or the embed code. So that's another option for you. We also have the legacy email feature in there. We will never, probably never remove. And then for those of you in a high school, uh, you'll be interested to see that there's also Google Classroom integration. So if you simply click on the button share to classroom, you can then choose your class whichever class you want to add it to, decide if you want to make it part of an assignment, a question, or an announcement, and so on. So if you're familiar with uh, uh, Google Classroom, those features are actually integrated into the database. You can also download any of the articles that you come across, uh, anything printable basically, so whether it's an article, uh, a criticism, a, a summary, uh, anything like that, a list of characters. Uh, we also have citation information in MLA, Chicago, and Harvard, uh, and if you're using Easy Bib, you can also export the citations. Uh, there's a read aloud feature for students who are having difficulty comprehending. You know, maybe there's just a lot of stuff going on in the article and it helps them to um, to hear the, the article written aloud or read aloud rather. And then this was another thing that I kind of requested over the years because whenever you do a search, you'll see the term uh, highlighted in yellow all throughout the article. And if you're searching and, and you land on an article that's that where that term appears, you know, a hundred times, you'll see it listed and highlighted a hundred times. So that irritates you. You can always turn those off. So uh, let's go back to our search results quickly. I mentioned a list of characters. So you can actually choose from any of the main characters throughout the novel, in this case, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, and there'll be articles on each of the main characters, as well as any images and videos that you uh, that's that's kind of what a typical landing page looks like. But if you look across the most studied works, you'll see Gatsby, for example, 1984. So pretty well known, the color purple, uh, you know, certainly a, 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 a who's who of novels or you know works of literature that have been taught year year after year that are kind of those perennial uh, perennial works that are that are continuing to be taught. 
And then along with the most studied works slider, we also have a most studied author. So if you click on any of the authors, you'll also see uh, in similar fashion some um, information highlighted. In this case, because we're looking at an author, we have a featured biography, as well as just like with the works of literature, uh, a, a tab containing all the reference information, all of the criticisms. And then if we actually have a full text work by that particular author, uh, we will also include their actual work under the selected works tab. And we have a whole selection of full text literary classics, which we'll also take a look at today. And then again, any images and videos. And if we have, uh, which we most likely do, a how to write about essay about this particular person, uh, that will be listed under this area here. Uh, similar to how we had some featured items under the author or under the work section. Uh, in this case, we also have a, a an article entitled "How to Write About Children's Books, Screenplays, Plays, and Documentaries." So you're going to find a, just a treasure trove of different types of resources listed there. Um, so are are the two that we had a question? Are the two articles by Bloom uh, listed the same article? Um, I don't believe. If, I don't, I'm not. I'm not sure where what that question was in reference to. I know we were looking at To Kill a Mockingbird, so I'm going to assume that that's what um, you were asking about. Let's go, and and the, the, the kind of the fun thing about this is every time you go back to the homepage, you'll see that things are in different order. Uh, so if we look at the criticisms, I think that's where we were. Uh, Bloom on To Kill a Mockingbird, you can always see the, uh, you can see the articles here. These are actually, uh, it looks like in this case, they probably are, uh, the same article, although there, there's different descriptions. So uh, let's see here. The continued popularity of, and then uh, the second one is. So yeah, there's there are actually two different articles, and so uh, sometimes you, you, I'm sure you know, as with with um, many classic works of literature, um, we might have the same article kind of divvied up in a couple of different ways. So it looks like this is actually a, from the same overall article, but it's two different. Um, it's two different. Um, you know, origin like original sources. So this is from a, um, a a Bloom's criticism called To Kill a Mockingbird: New Edition, and then this one is from a, a work called To Kill a Mockingbird: Harper Lee. Um, but it's probably the the article is probably similar in both locations. But they will be there will be often multiple references to uh, articles on the same topic. So it, the best thing to do in that case is to kind of really check to make sure that you're looking at two different articles. And the other thing is when you go to an actual article page. Uh, you'll also be able to see um, the uh, the original source. So you can click on it, and it will show you all the record information over here. So if you're not sure, you can always click on it and see exactly where the original source or where that article came from as far as the original source. Uh, so the other sliders also include uh, things like most studied characters and featured videos. I mean, obviously, again, just like with the various works of literature, there are certain characters that seem to be studied, you know, over and over again perennially throughout the years, including uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet, um, Elizabeth Bennet from Pride and Prejudice. You know, you could got, kind of go through here and see um, Rip Van Winkle, that's a great, great character, Antigone. Uh, so you can see, you know, kind of where that list particularly. We also offer a series of featured videos, which are going to direct you to a full text, or, or rather a full um, full length stage or screen adaptation of a certain um, work of literature. So uh, those are what the some of the information that you're going to find in those various sliders. Uh, you can always browse, and basically the way Blooms has always been designated, uh, the content in Blooms has always been broken into three general areas, and that is authors, works and characters. So that basically hasn't changed. The, um, it, it's certainly the same in the new iteration of Blooms. We have our complete author index where you can narrow your author uh, search by specific criteria, or you can simply type in the name of an author directly into the search box. So let's say uh, we were looking, for example, Dickens. Uh, we can go ahead and click find author, and we're going to find uh, information on that particular author. And again, that one ref, that one result actually takes us to uh, over 1,200 reference results. Um, 
you know, 237 criticisms. And, and so you do have to make sure that you click through and look at each section as you kind of browse through or search the database because you will get uh, quite a number of results as you do your searches. Uh, so the sim similar idea for the works index, you can do a, you can narrow your results by choosing a specific type of work, either a novel or work of nonfiction, uh, specifically an autobiography, or you can de designate a certain time period for your search, or you can directly filter your search by author's name uh, and then go right to a particular uh, author. And then the character index kind of looks similar to the way it used to look. I don't think they did a whole lot here um, because really searching for a character is, is there's really only certain ways you can do that. Uh, the, the main way is to search by character's name, but you can also search by a work. So for example, um, I, in, in college I studied Uncle Tom's Cabin. Whoops, if only I could type. Uh, so if, when you start typing in Uncle Tom, you'll see a whole list of characters from uh, that particular work. So you could very easily kind of choose any one of those characters uh, and, and you don't even have to finish typing in the name of the work. It's going to actually come right up there for you. Uh, let's see, just doing a quick check for questions. Uh, has the search functionality changed for changed any for literature criticisms? Uh, once you get to the criticism tab, uh, for a selected work, can you search within just criticisms? Uh, there isn't a, uh, a secondary search mechanism. So let's say if we were looking at, uh, you know, th again, this keeps changing. So we'll just look at Jane, uh, Lord of the Flies here. So there isn't another, it's like a secondary search functionality here. Uh, but usually you'll get a fairly reasonable number of results. I mean, the reference results tend to be a bit higher. Uh, this one's kind of reasonable. It's not huge or, or overwhelming. But remember, you can always use your your filters here and narrow your results by specific types of resources. So if we're looking, for example, at the reference uh, items for Lord of the Flies, you can narrow that specifically to uh, the discussion questions or to the overviews and um, uh, you'll, you'll have a much more manageable result. Or, I mean, if you always, if you want, you can always do a quick search here. So for example, like I mentioned before, if you do bloom on uh, Lord of the Flies, for example, you'll get a, a certain, you know, you'll get results specifically about uh, Lord of the Flies, and then you can kind of take it from there. But there isn't another uh, secondary or tertiary search functionality within a lot of those sections, just because once we tab the results, it, it kind of narrows things down quite a bit for you uh, as you're doing your searches. We don't, we don't want it to get, you know, we don't want people to get completely lost in uh, multi-layered searching and then kind of forgetting, uh, you know, where you, where you were and then, and, and end up someplace that you might not want to be. So we, we, I, I think w the way it is now actually works pretty well. Um, but if you, you know, if you have suggestions, we definitely take them. If you have experience with other resources that do that, uh, um, I haven't really seen that feature available in too many different um, places, but it's certainly something to to discuss. All right, um, so moving right along here, we also provide. Uh, I'm just going to quickly point these out. It's not not nothing huge. Uh, curriculum tools are basically articles for both students and educators to kind of guide them on uh, certain paths. For example, for students, if they're doing research, um, uh, there's a, some information on citing sources, uh, kind of understanding what plagiarism is, which you know even no matter how um, many times it's taught, no matter how many times it's clarified, there are still students out there who just struggle with knowing that even if they change a few words here and there, it's still plagiarism. So uh, we do want to provide those, those assists for uh, educators. And then along the same lines, we have a couple of articles here for educators, including a really uh, helpful article on teaching literature through film, because Blooms does contain quite a good amount of um, video content. So, you know, if you're looking for if you're looking, for example, at a uh, stage or screen adaptation of a certain work of literature, how do you use it? And, and you know, this is a debate that I know, having been an English teacher myself, uh, that people generally have you know quite a range of disagreement on. There are some people who who will, for example, show the entire um, video of a play or or you know whatever the case may be after students read the work. Others will say, you know what, no, that's a complete waste of time. Uh, we're just going to show snippets of it and have students compare. You know, they're all different kind of ways of thinking of that. But uh, this article actually is really helpful in kind of framing. You know, how do you uh, take, for example, a 
a work of literature and then teach it through uh, film. I mean, it, it's a whole different maybe way of looking at it uh, because you're not just using the video as a support, but you're actually teaching uh, with the video as your source or as your tool. So uh, just a little bit of a different approach there. And we have a number of search options here for you. We have, uh, in addition to doing just a basic keyword search, you can also do an advanced search. And this may help uh, those of you who are asking about um, like secondary searches of, for example, criticisms, you could very easily do a much more specific search. So if I did, you know, I'm just going to type something in here. Uh, if I, let's say I was looking for information on King Lear, uh, I only want to see criticisms, and so I can go ahead and do my search that way. Or if I only want to see reference, and then I can spe specify if I only want to see, for example, discussion questions, how to write about entries, and so on. So uh, that's another way to kind of um, streamline the search process a little bit to make sure that you're not getting an over num uh, overwhelming number of results. Uh, so now we get to the more fun part of Bloom's literature, which is again, what I said in the beginning is that we have all this great uh, content in Blooms and, and not just the articles and the criticisms and the reference works and so on, but we have a, a number of support, uh, supporting resources that previously were kind of buried and, you know, we're the first to admit it. Uh, we had, for example, at one point we added over 9,000 discussion questions and it was kind of, they were kind of hidden under a, a you know, basically a, a tab that said more and you kind of had to look for it behind, you know, kind of a hidden tab. So we said, you know what, that's just too good to have hidden behind a, a, a button or a link or anything where people might not know to look. So now we've pulled that right out of the database and made it a feature on the home page. And by the way, you can also see those things when you go and hover over the, the browse option at the top of your screen. We also, again, have all those resources here as well. Um, but also, uh, uh, we're going to circle back to those, but very quickly I want to point out a couple of, of uh, you know, major um, additions to Bloom's, one of which is the Shakespeare Center. So this was um, an idea that we had, at one point we were thinking about actually making a separate uh, Shakespeare research database, so it would have been its own its own resource uh, apart from or you know completely um, separated from Bloom's. But we really felt like Bloom's was more than more. Uh, you know, we kind of landed upon the idea that Bloom's was the perfect home for something like that. So we ended up adding all that great uh, content that we had directly into Bloom's literature. So now it's part of the database. Uh, it's a great great resource for students who are studying uh, Shakespeare. Shakespeare, and, and what this does is it actually breaks down uh, every aspect of all of Shakespeare's works, including uh, an entire section dedicated to each one of his plays, uh, and these sections include things like overviews, and these are, again, they're, they're linking to content that you could also find if you just basically do searches, uh, but it's putting it all in one location, so you have your overview, uh, which includes a list of characters, um, any difficult might encounter while studying the play, key passages, uh, difficult passages. I mean, some of the plays really are, um, you know, they, they, they are challenging for students. Um, a critical introduction, uh, modern criticism, and critical controversies. So that's a great place to see kind of, you know, wh what people are thinking about these plays today. And speaking of which, uh, there's an actual section called uh, The Play Today, which puts a lot of these plays which are, you know, going on, uh, 500 years old now in a more modern context. So what, you know, how can we as 21st century citizens relate to these these plays that were written, you know, so long ago and, and have ideas that we really don't experience and, and you know, may, might not be able to relate to. to so uh, that puts, you know, these, these very old, uh, in, in relative terms, uh, works of, of, of literature uh, into a more modern context. And then we also have some related re resources like specific Bloom's criticisms about each of these works, uh, critical essays, how to write about, and this is again a, a new um, section that we've added to the homepage, and we'll go and see that too, uh, discussion questions and so on. Uh, and then we also have for each play an actual for a full text version of the play, so that's listed under the full text work, uh, and you can go from one act to the other and back and forth very easily. And also, if there's a video for that particular play, which it's there's there isn't one for every play at this point, um, but if there is, you'll be able to click on the, uh, the the image here on the left, and it'll actually take you directly to the video itself.
Uh, and then we also have an, a, an entire section of information about Shakespeare, so everything from uh, the, the language used in Shakespeare and the history of the authorship controversy, which of course many people don't actually believe that the works that we attribute to William Shakespeare were written by Shakespeare. Uh, when I was in college I actually did an article on how um, one of the people who they thought might have actually written Shakespeare's plays was a, a gentleman by the name of John Lilly, who was a, a contemporary of Shakespeare's, and very possibly, you know, between the, the uh, because of the writing style similarities and, and just the fact that they were contemporaries of each other, and um, you know, some of the some of the the similarities in some of their uh, their writings, it was it was thought that he might be among those people who might actually have written Shakespeare's plays. Um, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and assume that Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare's plays, and that's kind of you know the the general path that Bloom's literature takes, which is you know certainly uh, the one we're going to take as well. Um, and then the, those how to write about articles are phenomenal resources, especially for students who might not be entirely familiar with some of these works they're studying. Uh, this is going to direct students to how um, excuse me how to write about not only. In, uh, specific works of literature. So here's an article on, for example, how to write about the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. But you can also select a specific author. So, you know, if you were doing maybe a poetry study, uh, you could you could look up Robert Frost, how to write about um, Elf, or how to write about a number of his um, most well-known poems. So, um, you know, there, this is just a great great resource for uh, just kind of diving into you know some of these authors and works in a, in a, a bit of a more supportive environment so if students again are, are maybe not as familiar with some of these works uh, that's a great way to um, to pro to approach that um, and so a, a, few other, a few other resources here. We have a link to all the discussion questions that are in Bloom's literature. Uh, now the, the number here you see 2205, that's the number of works that the, the, uh, that the questions come from. Uh, and then there, because there are going to be times when uh, you'll notice uh, multiple sets of discussion questions for the same work. You know, we, we took all the resources that we had for all the works that we had and included them in the discussion questions. So over altogether, we've added about 9,000 plus individual discussion questions. And these are, um, you know, sometimes they're short. These This one happens to be relatively short. If you look for some, you know, well-known uh, works, let's just scroll down here. Let's see who we have. Uh, two, 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 two. Uh, let's see. We have. Let's just say uh, W. Uh, w. E. B. Du Bois, for example. So we'll have. Uh, we may have multiple sets of questions, um, but you'll see. You might see that some of these are, you know, quite de quite detailed and quite thorough. So here are a set of five discussion questions. You know, much more detailed, much more involved. These could also be used as um, um, writing prompts. They could be used as, you know, essay questions for like a. a a midterm or a final exam, just all different possible ways to use those. Uh, we also have an entire section of those literary classics that I mentioned earlier. So anytime you do a search for a work, for example, uh, let's just do Beowulf for uh, for instance. You'll uh, you'll see that if we actually have a full text version of that work, it's going to come up under a section called literary works. So here's another link to uh, the ebook version of Beowulf, and these are uh, these are um, uh, EPUB ebooks basically, so you can you can you know go page by chapter by chapter here or however the book is laid out, and then also you can um, you know once you get in here you can also see all the summary information, all the metadata. Uh, you can share the individual ebooks to Google Classroom uh, as well as see the actual citation information, uh, and these are these are actually. Um, uh, these these works come from the Gutenberg project, so you can uh, you also have the ability to download these. I mean, you that it's certainly an option, but they are available you know 24/7 via streaming. But if you ever have a situation where you think, gee, you know what, my internet might be a little bit slow, uh, I'm going to download this and use it later. Uh, that's perfectly you know within your rights to do that. Uh, these are again um, part of they were I should say part of the Gutenberg project. So you'll see about 800 of those, and then the old version of Bloom's device divided um, the works into movements and themes, that's still the same, those, those same movements that were in the previous version and also the themes, those are still very much the same, uh, abandonment for example, 
um, you know, community, coming of age, and so on. So those are all there as well. And then we also have a collection of full text poems. Uh, we have about 2650 or so of those. Uh, again, you can search by author or by date range if you're looking for a particular literary period. Maybe you're looking at, you know, romanticism or something like that. Uh, you could very, very easily punch in a couple of dates and then do kind of a date range. Uh, or you can, again, search by author. So if you are looking for a particular author, for example, um, I think we looked at Robert Frost earlier, so you can simply uh, find Robert Frost, and then you'll find over 100 and, uh, about 117 full-text versions of his poetry. And the nice thing about using Bloom's literature for that is, I don't know if you've ever had students search online for, for written versions of poems, uh, it's a nightmare. You just never know who the person was who um, added the poem to their website, whether or not they actually recorded it in the author's original uh, format. So, you know, you might have line breaks that are off or, or uh, punctuation, capitalization. Maybe this person was a maniac and thought they could do a better job than some of these classic poets. So the, the poems in Bloom's literature are actually going to be uh, quite accurate. You don't have to ever worry about that. Uh, we also have a number of timelines for literature. So if you're if you're teaching certain aspects of literature, for example, medieval lit or um, uh, 19th century lit, that's a pretty popular popular uh, grouping to teach. Or if you're doing a whole unit on modern and contemporary literature, uh, that's also available in a timeline as well. And then the last section here is a um, the entire collection of videos for uh, that are in uh, Bloom's literature. These are as an assortment of both, as I mentioned earlier, full screen or stage adaptations of uh, literary works, or they could be videos that support the study of a particular work. So maybe there are uh, good, you're going to find some shorter videos in there. Um, but among some of the highlights, we have the um, the Royal Shakespeare Company production of Hamlet, starring David Tennant. That's part of this collection, as well as a number of um, you know older classic television versions of some classic literature. We have some uh, Don Quixote. I know there's a, a 1984 video in there. So just a really a great, you know, a great section to check out uh, if you're if you're um, interested in showing, you know, whether in whole or in part. Uh, there's the um, the uh, Adventures of Don Quixote. It's the 33 edition. So you're going to find a, a nice mixture of more recent and more classic type videos in there, but a great a great resource. Um, so I think that will take us to the end. I, I kind of, uh, a lot of times when I do a Bloom's webinar, I start out with pointing out Bloom's canon. Uh, I think we're going to end there today just to let you know that it's here. You can search for, uh, and, and certainly a database that bears the name of Harold Bloom would not be complete without information on the canon. So um, we're not going to dive into it, but I want to make sure that I point it it out to you. Uh, and here's a nice little blurb on Harold Bloom, what he's up to today. Uh, I know he is currently well into his, his 80s. Uh, I think at last check he's about 86, 87 years old, something like that. Still writing, still contributing to Bloom's literature, so we're just very happy and honored to be working with uh, someone of his stature, and I believe he's still um, a professor at Yale. I think he's been <clears throat> there for quite some time, and I don't believe he's he's left. Uh, so he's probably still, you know, available if you're if you're interested in taking his course. Uh, I'm sure you can still do that. Definitely, you know, feel free to check out uh, all the aspects of Bloom's literature, and don't forget to grab a copy of. Um, have a uh, grab a copy of the flyer that's attached to the webinar that's located under the handout section that's yours to take away and share as needed so thank you all so much for joining me today I uh, hope you all enjoy the rest of your week have a great upcoming weekend and as we get closer to the holiday season uh, hopefully you will have some time coming up to relax and enjoy the holidays so thank you all so much for joining me today. My name is Angel. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day.